Hello. Uh, it's bonus time. I can't believe you made it this far. Thanks for staying with me and uh, subscribing to my channel. Today I'm going to be looking at Algebra 1, Lesson 102. Uh, this one will be solving quadratic equations using square roots. Uh, we've been using lots of different methods to analyze quadratics. We've crafted them, used our calculators to analyze them. We've used the formulas themselves. And today we're going to take up a particular a couple of types, setups of uh, quadratics. Uh, but I need to tell you a little story first. There's a, a great book, Summer Reading, here by this guy here, John Derbyshire. read another book uh, by him about the Riemann hypothesis. Unknown Quantity, A Real and Imaginary History of Algebra. <laughs> Sounds like exciting reading, right? But uh, in uh, one of the earlier chapters, he has um, a chapter on what he calls completion and reduction. Completion and reject, reduction. And uh, he introduces the word algebra. Wow, this is pretty exciting, huh? And uh, algebra, uh, that word was invented by uh, a, um, an Arab mathematician, and his name was Al Khwarizmi. Very famous in math circles, Al Khwarizmi. Uh, his name is where we get the word algorithm, which is usually like as we explain a series of steps that you would take to get the solution. Step one, step two, step three. In, uh, in his writings, as he explored uh, quadratic equations, x squared types of equations, he used a, a couple of different phrases that we've, we've done before as we've solved for equations. And that is called completion and reduction, or in, uh, in Arabic, al-jabr and al-mukabala. Al -mukabala. Al-jabr is the word uh, that we get algebra from, and it basically means to add to both sides. That's what completion means, to add something to both sides. And uh, al-mukabala means to subtract from both sides or reduction. So that's the do uh, add to both sides or take away from both sides rule that we've used many, 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 many times. So that's where our word algebra comes from, from the word for completion or algebra. Now, let me uh, move over just a bit and look at the uh, uh, how al Khwarizmi cataloged different kinds of quadratic equations. Now, none of these we see is our complete version uh, of, of quadratic. We're used to seeing uh, the standard form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. But I think you can see that uh, this one is very similar to that, and so is this, and so is this last one. If we just rearrange the parts, we would basically have things in that form. But what I want you to note is that in, in all of these different forms, there's a couple of things that are missing. One of those is zero. I don't know if uh, zero was technically like invented or discovered in Arab math uh, until much later, after al Khwarizmi, And another thing that's missing are minus signs. Negatives weren't very popular back then either. They would try to format the problem so that you didn't have to use a negative number. And, and there was no place for moving everything to one side and having nothing on the other. The reason why I bring this up is that because today we're going to be looking at a couple of different forms here. We're going to be looking at, I think, this form for a quadratic, as well as something that's kind of like, like this. No, no, no. Like this. No, no, no. I think it's just going to start out as basic as possible. Let's see. x squared equals 40. Yeah, I think we're going to be looking at case number two. Uh, there's no linear term in what we're doing today. So yeah, that's the winner right there is case number two. Okay, there's your background. Now um, I'm going to clear the board and we're going to get to some of, uh, of the business. Uh, pause. Uh, unpause. Okay, so you can see what's missing here. 
ax squared equals, and technically if we're looking at our form up here, this is equals c. So this is the part of our equation that makes it quadratic, that gives it the curve, the parabolic shape. This part right here is the linear part. That is, if that was gone, we basically have ourselves the, uh, the formula, the equation of a line, like mx plus b. Okay, And then this last part is the constant. So in today's version, we've got the first part, ax squared, and then we've got the constant. That constant could be on either side. Uh, in these two, the constant is over on the right side of the equal sign. And um, this one's a pretty easy solve. We could change its form and have it as x squared minus 25 by, by reduction, subtracting from both sides. And uh, that would be a parabola that crosses way down here at negative 25. I think you would recognize that. You could graph it pretty quickly. And what we're looking for, again, are the zeros or the solutions. Okay, the, the examples will say solve, and uh, we're looking for um, the solutions of this, basically where that, where that parabola crosses the x-axis. So um, I complicated it, right? I made it so that I could graph it, but really we can just solve this by taking the square root of both sides. And the square root of x squared is x, and over here we have to account for the fact that it could have been a plus or a minus five for starters. And, and as I graphed it, you could see that there was symmetrical with the axis of symmetry being uh, x equals zero, and, uh, and it crossed at both a five and a negative five. So there's our solutions. We know that it has to have two solutions. Uh, this is almost set up exactly the same, but you can see maybe there's the problem. If we put it in like our regular form, this is, uh, this is the sum of two squares. We don't really have a formula a way to break that apart right now. If it was the difference of two squares, we got an answer, but it's not. It's the sum of two squares. So solving this the same way, uh-oh, we got a problem over here. This side is x, but we get plus minus something that we don't really have a definition for, uh, not until next year when we talk about complex numbers. This, this has no real answers. And if we looked at this as, as a graph, it would be way up here at 16 and there's nowhere on the x-axis where it touches uh, where it crosses and is a zero or has a solution so this one has uh, no solutions or we would say no real solutions if you change the mode on your calculator you can get it to spit out some uh, solutions but for right now your calculator is probably set in real mode and not the next one over. And that's that's all that we really care about today. This one doesn't really have an answer because it never crosses our x-axis. Let me get a couple more up on the board. These are really pretty simple and basic. Uh, we just add a little bit of stuff. Why don't we have a number, a constant on both sides? But uh, all we gotta do is put it on one side or the other. And I'll take this in two ways really quickly. What if we what if we made this equal zero? We would do reduction, subtract from both sides, take 52 away from both sides, and that would give us x squared minus 49 equals zero. And this is the difference of two squares. It's x squared minus seven squared. So this would break down to x minus seven, x plus seven, and using the zero product property, we could solve this that x is 7 or x is negative 7 plus or minus 7. That's one way we could do it. We could put it over there. We notice the difference of two squares. We've been doing that forever. And uh, when we get our two answers or two solutions, 7 and negative 7, graph it. You can see that that would be true. Another way to do that would, would be to move that 3 to the other side and then finish it off by taking the square root of both sides. So this would give us x squared equals 49. Take the square root of both sides. Remember, there's a plus and the minus version of the answer. Same exact answers that we had uh, doing it the other way. It just depends on what you like to do.
I like the difference of two squares. It's one of my favorite things in the world. Besides the Liverpool Football Club and uh, Bacon. Uh, here's another one where it's already set up as the difference of two squares. This is 2x squared minus 10 squared. So you could say, well, that's 2x plus 10 and 2x minus 10. And we could set each of those to 0 and solve minus. Um, so take away 10 from both sides and then divide by 2. That gives us x is negative uh, 10 over 2, which is 5. And here we would add 10 to both sides and then divide by 2. And we get x is a positive 5. We get plus or minus 5. All right. Now, maybe you don't like that way. Maybe you don't. There's another way to solve it. If you want to hit pause and get this down, that's great. I'm going to erase it really quickly here. I say it really quickly. Got to do it quickly. Okay. And the other way would be to kind of set it up like this. Okay. So we don't want that negative 100. We want that over on the other side. We could we could uh, algebra that thing. Completion. Uh, 4x squared equals 100 by adding 100 to both sides. And now we're going to divide by 4. So x squared equals 25. Then take the square root of both sides. There's our answers again. Plus. Or minus five. See, this is really like straightforward and simple, right? And it's less than 102. Are you kidding me? All right, just one extra little bit here. Um, yeah, just hang on just a sec. Oh man, what if, what if we're setting up one of these problems and we're we're allowed to write the problem however we want to, right? We said that a negative wasn't going to work over there, but what about a not perfect square? All that we've had thus far was like a 25 or a 49 or a 100 it is really simple and straightforward. But I'm going to roll the dice and we're going to put something else in there. And the dice says 20. All right. Now, how do we solve a problem like this? Because this, this definitely could happen. This is a parabola that crosses at negative 20. And we're looking for the solutions, right? We're looking for the where it crosses the x-axis. We would solve this exactly the same way as we did those other ones by just finishing off by taking the square root of both sides. And at this point, I want to be careful here and uh, and really treat this like it it's math, right? And so if I want to get an exact answer, I'm going to have to break this down and see if there's any perfect squares in there. Okay, do some factoring of, of 20. And then, uh, and then just leave it with uh, irrational stuff in there with square root. So 20 is 4 times 5. Okay, so this is really square root of 4 times the square root of 5. And this part can turn into 2. And that part be this. So here is a totally legitimate way to write the answer to this problem. And then if you did graph it, and you're looking at where the intercepts were, um, you can always just double check and, and verify that 2 uh, square root of 5, 4.47, will be just like if we did the problem x squared uh, minus 20 and, uh, and graphed it. It appears that it crosses somewhere between 4 and 5. And if I go to my uh, zeros and I go find the one on the left. Okay, and I ask it for what it is, and it gives me negative 4.47, or more specifically, uh, negative 2 roots of 5. So uh, they, the book seems to allow you to give an estimation. Um, I prefer if you would leave those uh, answers just the, the way that they were. The one in the book uh, that they didn't roll for was like x squared is 40. And so again, we take the square root of both sides. We have plus minus square root of 40, which is uh, 4 times 10. That would give us uh, 2 
roots of 10 for our answers, or you could graph it and you get your estimation of about six point something on that. Uh, that's about it. There's one application question, but it, it just uses the same thing. Once we get it to this point where there's an x squared on one side and a number on the other, you're going to finish it off by taking the square root of both sides and giving me two solutions, a plus version and a minus version. I hope that helps. You know, you, you've done a great job this year and you're just at the end. And isn't it nice to kind of have something easy to finish this off with? I think so, too. All right. Peace in the Middle East, all.